A federal high court in Abuja has granted the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, an interim order to freeze 1,146 bank accounts belonging to individuals and companies. This order follows allegations of unauthorized foreign exchange dealings, money laundering, and terrorism financing. The ruling delivered by Justice Emekangwite comes after the EFCC's ex party motion seeking to freeze the accounts and conclude its investigation within 90 days. According to the EFCC, preliminary investigation suggests that the frozen accounts are linked to individuals exploiting virtual cryptocurrency exchanges to manipulate the Naira's value and launder proceeds from illegal activities. But joining us via Zoom is a lawyer and public affairs analyst, Omori Edogiawere. Good morning. Happy International Workers' Day. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Happy Workers' Day to you, too. <laughs> Now, Good let's time. begin with uh, this fight against uh, corruption and addressing the matter of the stability of the Naira that the EFCC has been pushing for some time now. And now we are seeing that uh, there is a federal high court granting the commission an interim order to freeze this number of banks, about 1,146 of uh, these accounts. Let's get your perspective on this move by the EFCC? Well, um, as, as with our training as lawyers, when a matter is sub judice, um, we're not expected to speak to it or grant interviews. It's actually unethical to come and speak to issues that are still before the courts. But I'd rather speak generically um, to the issues that have led to that action. Right. And I think um, what's, what's very pivotal here is the failure of um, adequate regulation. And I've always said, right, as a technology lawyer, one of the things that I have always pointed out is the fact that the regulator must understand the regulated. And the regulator must prepare itself to be able to adequately regulate. Regulation has moved beyond sitting in fine offices and, you know, checking figures, but understanding the terrain within which you're seeking to regulate. What are the loopholes? What are the gaps that need to be constantly <clears throat> filled? What are the innovative things that are being done? What, where is the ingenuity coming from, right? It's just like you having kids, right? As you have a child from uh, three months to six months to one year to two years, they begin to grow and they begin to show, you know, different traits. And you as a parent must be a step ahead of them. Imagine a child that is crawling, right? When our children were toddlers, what did we do? We baby proofed the house because they started learning how to open doors, they started learning how to open the fridge, they started learning how to touch different things. And so what did we do? We started putting all the baby proofing mechanisms in place so they don't harm themselves, so they don't put you know themselves and even the home in jeopardy, right? Our regulators doing this. Technology and innovation is the new way to go. And in the fintech space, it is the only way the financial technology and financial services space can thrive. Are the regulators up to speed with understanding the level of ingenuity, growth, and transformation that comes into that space? I do not think so. Mm. And that's why we're here. What are the KYC requirements, right? The, the, the EFCC approached the court because they have found a lot of illicit transactions. They have found a lot of um, um, market manipulation. They have found a lot of forex irregularities, right? If there was adequate regulation, regulation that understood the technology. I do not think that that would be necessary because as soon as it happens, you're nipping it in the bud. Mm. So I think that's where, that, that's where we are and that's where we really need at this time to look at and focus on. Now, the, the regulator uh, at some point, now I'm talking about the CBN now, at some point has raised, raised concerns about some of these platforms and their modes of transaction, taking advantage of perhaps the gaps that we are seeing. Prior to today, right, prior to this present administration, and I do hope that they don't, they don't follow the, the, the history that they've had. What we've seen with the regulator is, I don't understand it, I shut it down. I don't yeah. understand it, I shut it down. I don't understand it, I close it. I don't understand it, I freeze it. I don't understand it. No. The world is moving. Look, blockchain, cryptocurrency have come to stay. There's absolutely nothing 
that we could do about it, right? It's 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 an unending ocean. So you really can you go to the, the to the Atlantic Ocean today and try to and try to dredge it and try to you know create borders around it? No matter how hard you try and how much you invest in, it will continue to overflow. So what do you do? You understand the waves, you understand the tide, you understand it instead of shutting it down, and then you prepare adequate regulation, regulation that that is up to speed, regulation that is in tune with realities, right? So how do you achieve that? Work with the sector players, work with people. People say, look, I'm a cryptocurrency analyst, I'm a cryptocurrency, I'm a blockchain specialist, I am doing this, right? Sit with these guys in the room, get to know what they're doing, and then build regulation that they understand, regulation that will not be inimical to the economy of the country, and regulation that will ensure that your work is purposeful. As against shutting it down because you do not understand it. Okay, so as a lawyer, so, what do you think should be the form of regulations that should be um, put in place? So, when when you say what the form of regulation should be, it's it that's a bit generic, right? Okay. Sector understanding the sector is the beginning of regulation, not understanding your role as a regulator. Understanding the sector, so I'm a startup attorney. Technology, innovation, the creative economy are the places where I thrive and play. So what do I do? I understand that economy well. So when I'm discussing with clientele, I'm able to speak to them not from an understanding of law, but from an understanding of the ecosystem where they operate and the things that help them in that ecosystem thrive. Now, what we see is, and what we continue to see are regulators who understand the power they have as regulators, understand the laws that back them as regulators, but do not understand the industry that they seek to regulate. Mm. And so they wield that power as regulators. They wield that power given to them by law against an industry or on an industry that they have not taken time to really understand the nuances of it. I go back to my children analogy right? As a parent, you could make rules to regulate, you know, how your children behave at home and stuff. But if you do not understand them, the rules oftentimes will end up being breached more. But when you sit with them and there's a dialogue and there's an understanding, I could say to them, look, you've got to go to bed by eight o'clock, mm. right? Because I need you to be awake by six o'clock to get ready and get to school by seven o'clock. And if you don't get to school by 7 o'clock, you may probably miss assembly or you may miss the first, the first class and stuff. You know, they don't beat children anymore. So I would say, oh, your teacher will smack you, <laughs> right? So, but the child now understands the trajectory. That's different from saying at 8 o'clock, all, uh, 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 all the uh, devices, drop your iPads, go to bed, switch off the light. Nobody should speak. I don't want to hear anything. If I find you, I will flog you and I'll beat you. And they wouldn't understand that I'm trying to do this for their own good or trying to establish a particular thing because I have a dialogue with them. So, and this was actually the reason for sandbox programs back, back in the day, right? The idea around sandbox program is to understand the technology, is to create a fusion between the technology and the regulation, right? But that apparently isn't really working as it should. So the beginning is to sit down with these players. They are there. Bring everybody into the room and let's talk. Mm. And begin to fashion out mechanisms in place and let them know, look, I've dealt with people who are cre uh, creatives and innovative technologists, right? Who are building disruptive, beautiful products to help growth and development. And mm. oftentimes, the biggest gap they have is that they don't, sometimes don't even understand the regulation. That binds them. They don't understand the laws that regulate the actions and, and the things that they ought to do or how to do it better. And so this gap continues to widen, especially as technology continues to grow, like the speed of light. Look, forget about blockchain and, and, and cryptocurrency, right? We're going into the era of artificial intelligence. And yes, now we're looking at large, large language models. We're looking at different things, but it's also going to go into fintech. Even more. It's already in the fintech space. It's already been applied, but it's also going to be a lot more pronounced in that space. How do you now 
address some of these issues if you do not understand the speed of innovation. From what you've said, you communication oh, is a major exactly. gap. Yeah, we can't continue running to court as, a, as an option. Mm. We can't continue freezing out, right? We've got to begin to need these things in the board as they happen. Because there's a regulation that says if X, Y, Z happens, this account is shut down. And the parties understand. Mm. And so what that happens is that it mitigates some of these challenges to the barest minimum. What has happened is that we have allowed a free fall, free fall approach across board where innovators, technologists are building an in, uh, 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 disruptive, uh, innovative products without understanding regulation. Regulators are not understanding the, the products that these innovators are And so are we can't people. properly monitor the activities. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So it takes you to that place where you really can't monitor because what you think you're monitoring may not exactly be what is even going on. Right. Interesting, uh, because uh, we have been talking about uh, the last guest we were speaking about what the president intends, uh, speaking about our digital economy, making Nigeria uh, a vast uh, digital market. And if we have this kind of situation where we do not communicate or, and do not understand the regulations, the regulator do not understand what is going on, with those who are supposed to be regulated and the regulated do not even understand what the regulations are. How do we move forward? Bridging the gap, right? So I always say, you see, um, let me look, let me use the community policing approach, right? Why do police formations build their barracks and their first uh, stations within communities? Why are they not out? Because you cannot police people you don't understand. So you build your formations around them, you relate to them, there are, you understand their nuances, and then you're able to adequately police them. Because listen, even crime, for instance, is very, very uh, 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 relative to different environments, right? So same thing with technology, All growth, right. innovation. Okay. And so our regulators must now begin to play in the same in the same pond, in the same sea. Where Amari, is not Amari, unfortunately, we need to wrap up this conversation right now uh, because of time. But we must thank you, Amari Dohia, we're a lawyer and public affairs analyst for your time on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right, we're still talking about international work.